Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video I am finally ready to give my review of Kate Sith, the newest character in Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, so uh, let's go ahead and get to it. So originally I had planned to show my pulls, I did record them, however it was like 5 minutes, this video ended up being 34 minutes, and I'm so I just, I'm making, I'm making the executive decision to leave them out. I don't think they're that big of a deal. They weren't paid pulls or anything. If everybody has a conniption about it, I can always post them in a really short video. video. Uh, but for brevity, or at least trying to keep this video to a reasonable length, I'm just not gonna include those. So with that all finished, let's go ahead and actually get into the review of Kate Sith. So I wanna start with Limit Breaks. And the reason is I think Limit Breaks are one of the big things that sets characters apart in this game, and now that we have three to choose from, it's even more so. And so, we're going to go ahead and go down here and just look at all three of these Limit Breaks. This is what we're looking at. We've got Dice, Toy Box, and Moogle Dance. And I'm going to start off by talking about Toy Box and Moogle Dance because I think these are fantastic. And... You'll see more when we go into the weapons review. Kate Sith is really a utility hero. Um, I think that that's what he's designed for. However, it seems that with his crit abilities, he's a utility hero that probably will provide more DPS than most utility heroes without having to rearrange his kit to do so. I think that's pretty important because <laughs> you don't have to sacrifice another weapon to make sure he can also kind of do a little bit extra damage so toy box we're going to look at first we don't really care about the damage number that much what we're really caring about is this right here this is essentially a copy of tifa's somersault so we've got physical defense magical defense decrease potency mid that is what we want single enemy i started using tifa in this game mostly one of the biggest reasons was because of this. This made content so much more doable for me. Now, the second reason I used Tifa was because of her debuffs on enemies other than this, like the, you know, debuffs that were helped survive ability, right? Physical attack and magical attack decreases. And we'll get to that. But this, to me, uh, is, is already really big, and I think it's a good thing to have in his kit. And although it is already covered by Tifa, We've been getting more and more damage uh, weapons on Tifa, uh, more Arcanums, things of that nature, where Tifa is actually kind of sliding from being what I would have said earlier, you know, three months ago, I would have said Tifa was almost solely a, a utility character, but she's been getting more and more buffs to her weapons from a straight damage perspective, and so... If you want to slide her into a main damage dealer role, well, you still probably need somebody to fill that utility slot. And I think Kate Sith is just the person to do that. Now, one thing that he has that's even better than Tifa is the ability to do Moogle Dance as well. And this is awesome because sometimes you can't debuff the enemy, whether it's with just the physical defense or just the magic defense or maybe both. And so you can go ahead and bring in this because the, the next best thing, in my opinion, to debuffing the enemy is buffing your team. And I think this is really good. Uh, physical and magical attack increase. Basically, it's just you're covering all of your bases between these two. And then finally, we have dice. And this is really interesting. When I first read it and talked about it actually briefly in my last video, I was perplexed about what this strength meant and although i still don't have 100 percent confirmation about what that means i think from testing it and and kind of thinking about it i think this likely means both physical and magical attack i think it means that it can increase so that he rolls three dice when he casts the ability and each dice comes up between one and six and i think each dice or each die, each die can increase both physical and magical attack by up to six. That's what I believe, which would be a total 
maximum total of 18 times uh, his physical and magical attack. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in a comment if you know something or if you've done some testing that that doesn't seem right, but I'm gonna show you a few things in a minute here to why I think that's how it works and why it would make sense to just call it strength. And I mean, I guess they could have said increases physical and magical attack, but maybe they just mean, you know, everything that, that deals damage, uh, you know, as far as these stats go. I don't know. Now you'll notice here, it caps at a thousand. I've got it to level 10. And most damage dealers like Sephiroth and Cloud, for example, their single target damage dealing limits cap at 3000. So the reason is, is because of this. Um, because I'm gonna show you a test here. And this first one, this is when I only had him up to level five, which was giving him like 700% bonus. And this, I was just basically trying to cast this 10 times, which I had a lot of trouble doing. So I went to the current event because I know I can get at least one limit off there. And it was him and it was Sephiroth. And this is what my Kate Sith looked like at that time. Okay, this is the gear that I kind of had on him and what his stats were. And now this is what my Sephiroth looked like. And you can see his stats and also seeing, you know, the difference between the limit break numbers. And this is what happened in that test. So I started out with my cloud, he did different. And once we get through that, you'll see Sephiroth hit next. And I was just doing this for testing purposes while I was clearing out those limits. 26, eight, and that's because we did take a magic uh, buff for one of our abilities in the beginning. Six, a five and a five seems pretty good. And 27,000. He out damaged Sephiroth with a level five limit break versus Sephiroth's level 10 limit break. And ooh, that was that was like my first aha moment that maybe there's something to this guy uh, and maybe he can actually hit for pretty big numbers. That was getting me a little bit excited. Now, the next video I'm going to I'm going to pull up was naturally I was like, OK, at first, I didn't want to like throw in a bunch of memories into this because I didn't know if I was going to be using it. But then I figured, well, I've got to see what it's like, you know, at max level. So, you know, I, I did a test and this one did not have the magic ability buff. So Sephiroth's going to do a little bit less damage. Here you go. 22, seven. And then here comes Kate. Not as good of a roll, you'll see. All right, and 21.7, so they're about the same there. So not really that impressive, right? But then I kept going, and I will say, sometimes if you get really bad rolls, he's I've had him do as little as 10,000 damage in a limit. So he is really a gambler type of hero. However, uh, later on, I got this one. And here it comes, Astral Gate. He hits 22.4. And then Kate Sith comes, rolls the dice. Pretty good rolls, six, six, and four. 32.8. So he did 10,000 more damage on that limit break. And that's with considerably weaker stats. I mean, if you add those two together and you add Sephiroth, Sephiroth has like 1,500 more total attack stats than Kate Sith but Kate Sith out damaged him by 10,000 on that limit. Now, I can also tell you, later I was in a co-op lobby because I still needed to get a couple more uh, of these to unlock Toy Box. And I'm gonna show you the picture because unfortunately I wasn't recording it uh, when I was playing this because I didn't really expect anything big to happen. Um, but I ended up getting weird dice rolls. My dice rolls were a one, a one, and a three. And oddly, the ones are red, which you would think was going to be terrible. And I ended up hitting the boss for over 50,000. And I'll show the screenshot because that's all I had. You can see here, it did hit a 50,000 hit with Kate Sith. And uh, yeah, so I think one is actually the best you can do. That's my guess is that uh, they've actually made it to where basically a two would be the worst roll. Um, I think six is second best and one is the best. This is this is just a guess based on my anecdotal testing. However, I'm doing this just to show that yes, he can hit for big numbers. However, 
he's also a very gambly or luck based uh, character, which can be, I think, a lot of fun, but can also probably be quite frustrating at times. Now, the next thing I want to go into are the weapons. And I've spent quite a bit of time going through these weapons and really, like I made a spreadsheet, which I will actually show you. Uh, I'll show kind of how I feel about his weapons in general uh, and which ones I would be going for. And I've got kind of like three or four tiers of how I would place those. So coming into the weapons, um, I'm going to separate these. I'm not going to do them in order across the screen. I'm going to separate them, uh, in my opinion, kind of, I don't know, just group them in ways that make sense. I think makes it a little bit easier to follow. And I've, I've clumped them into what I call support weapons, uh, damage dealer weapons, and then mixed. And mixed just to me is, um, there's a reason I think you would put this in because you want him to do damage. However, it's still kind of more of a utility weapon, but it's not as pure of utility as the other ones. Uh, only one weapon falls into that mixed category. Three fall into the damage dealer category. And even then, I think two of those three are really poor damage dealer weapons. Uh, and so I would say overall he has one uh, potential damage dealer weapon and all the rest are really um, utility. And so that's the role that I really think he's going to shine in, but also able to do more damage than a typical utility character. That's that's where I would put him. So we're going to start with the featured weapon, Flower Vase. And I think this is an amazing weapon. This is the highest tier of weapon, I think, right now for him. And I've got one other weapon I put in that category. So what do I like about this weapon? Well, looking at it straight out of the box, we notice that, you know, magic attack increased to a single ally. That's great for utility characters because you don't want, ideally, you don't want your damage dealing characters to have to spend any ATB buffing themselves. It's just less overall damage that they can do mid to high potency right out of the box that is great going up to high to high potency starting at ob6 also great it's got an insane magic attack our ability 62 total on the magic attack here at ob10 uh, 54 at ob6 that's big and they didn't punish him i don't think on this one here i think 39 maybe there's some that go up to 46 but i think that's pretty standard so this alone to me is really good these are all in line uh, i would have loved to have seen a sigil break on one so i wouldn't give it the highest marks on those but it's still pretty good and for that alone i would say that this weapon is a great weapon however you also have to take into consideration that it's applying regen it's going to heal and then there's a 20% chance to cast haste on that ally as well. What else could you possibly want on a weapon for a utility character? I don't think there's anything. I think this is amazing. It is my highest tier. I think if you're going to play Kate Sith, 99% um, likely you're going to be using him with uh, this weapon, or at least in the magic based teams, right? And this is another reason I like him because they've made it to where he can fit into both magical base teams and physical base teams. That makes him really versatile, which means it's it's more worth it for a free to play or light spender to invest resources in him. All right, the next weapon leading from that one, we're going to look at his marching horn because it's kind of the counterpart to flower vase. And this is also for me in that highest tier category of weapons I would be trying to go for. I think these two weapons may probably be the highest two in my opinion. Okay, we've got physical attack increase at five star, mid to high. That's that's really, really good. Uh, it also does the regen and the heal, which to me is just bonus. Even if it didn't do any of this, I still think that's a great ability. Now, the next thing to look at though, and obviously it goes from high to high when you hit OB6, which is gonna be pretty par for the course, for the most part but then you have this insane heal stat as an r ability this caps out at 62 which to my knowledge 
The only other weapon right now that has this high of a heal stat for an R ability is Guard Stick for Aerith. Um, but as far as like your typical AoE healing stuff, like Prime Number or Fairy Tail, those max out at 31, meaning this is double, uh, double the points into this heal ability as those weapons and matched for guard stick, which I think is the only other weapon that has this high of a heal stat. I could be wrong, there could be one other one, but it's it's pretty rare to see this high of a heal stat. Now, he doesn't have an AoE heal available to him yet, uh, so I don't know how great that is for him. However, it could also make this weapon doubly good because it can be a sub weapon for a healer if you're not using him or not needing this particular weapon in a battle. Now, the buff debuff extension, this is perfect for him. Perfect for him. And, you know, one of the differences between this and Guard Stick, for example, is Guard Stick has this as well, but it's 20% and it's in the Materia slot. So that definitely makes this, I think, better to have it here because you can use it for everything instead of just one Materia. And I think, again, Buff and debuff extension is something that is really good for his kit because most of the stuff that he's going to be doing for your team revolves around buffing and debuffing. Almost 100% of it. So those are the two best weapons in my opinion. Uh, the next one we're going to look at though coming down for support weapons is the Crystal Megaphone. And this is just your standard instant barrier, solid barrier kind of thing where he's going to increase the defense of a single ally and it's mid to high right out the box, which is very good. It also gives the regen and a small heal. And I, that's about everything I really have to say about this. I think it's a fine weapon. It's not on my you know top of the list by any means, but when it's necessary, it's necessary. You know, if you were doing specific content that needed a physical defense increase, well then the value of this, a weapon like this goes up, you know, a lot. Okay. Moving along, we've got Silver Megaphone next. And uh, again, it's just another one of those things that you have in the kit. It's got a physical defense decrease to a single ally. It's also got 20% crit rate. And this is kind of the first weapon where we get into, if the crit procs, then he gets extra bonus uh, debuff. And the way his crit procking works with his weapons that can be one of two things. Either you get higher potency or you get a completely separate extra debuff altogether, which we'll see kind of moving forward. But here, you know, you're looking at physical defense decrease and it's only low, max low, and that stays the same even at OB10. However, if you crit, it's high potency and that doesn't matter if you have it even just five star, 20% chance it's high to high. And to me, that makes this weapon good just to have a five-star copy. You don't really have a need as a free-to-play, especially, I don't think, to get this much higher unless you're looking for our abilities or something else. Uh, so I really do like this and um, I, it's good, but I think you only need really one copy. So there's the silver megaphone. The next one we're going to look at is Battle Trumpet. And then again, this one is... It's a physical base weapon and so was the silver megaphone in fact of these this is the fifth weapon that we are reviewing and it's only the second one that actually has a c ability that does any site type of damage and the second one in a row that does physical damage and has a 20 percent crit rate which he's the only character in the game that has any weapon that modifies his crit rate and that's kind of a big deal because typically if, if anybody has a crit rate it's only 10 percent so this one, what does it do? Magic attack decrease, uh, which obviously is going to be good for any utility hero. Magic attack decrease, potency low, goes up to mid, but it's all enemies. So this is looking a lot like Kuja Spirit Blade in that regard, uh, especially when you consider if he hits the critical, it also does physical attack decrease to all enemies, making this the Kuja Spirit Blade that requires a crit instead of an HP threshold. That's kind of how I see it. And when you get to OB6, you're looking at mid to all enemies, right? And if the crit happens, it's high, okay? Um, now, the only bad thing is, is that magic attack decrease stays at mid. It never, it can't stack up to high. 
However, the physical attack one can, starting at OB6. So, uh, just, but actually, it can, sorry, it can stack to high at, at five star. I know that's kind of, the one thing I, I found when going through Kate Sith's abilities is that there's so much text in every single one of them. And this is why I didn't want to do this review right away. I really wanted to take some time to digest these because there's so many things to really consider. And again, it's why I'm going to show you kind of the cheat sheet that I made highlighting kind of the most important things of every weapon. And I will show you that at the end. Battle Trumpet, though, before I come off of it, it is the uh, next tier down. OK, so I'm going to put like, you know, I don't know, A tier, which I'll label in pink on my sheet. Uh, B tier or, you know, the next tier down that I would want would be Battle Trumpet. And that is going to be blue on my sheet. And this is the only blue weapon. So this would be the third next weapon that I would want probably after Flower Face and Marching Horn. But honestly, it could probably be up there with those two, to be honest with you. It's it's I think it's really quite good. OK, the next one, we're going to go to Gold Megaphone. And this one I have on like tier three. Um which I've labeled in orange on the sheet that I'm going to show. And the reason is this one and the next one, which is green megaphone. I don't think they're as high of priorities as the ones I've already talked about, but you know, having a fire breach and then later a um, water breach, those are really important when they're important. They're just not going to be important as often as the other ones. So I think these are good weapons to go for when you need them. But they're not something that I would, for for general account, uh, you know, progress or strength, they're not quite as necessary. So again, we have a physical non-elemental damage weapon with a 20% crit rate. That's three weapons in a row that are physical damage, 20% crit rate. And again, this is a fire breach potency mid to high, very similar to something like a bald eagle that we're used to seeing. Uh, but... If you hit the crit, it also takes magic attack down, potency mid, max potency high. So a 20% chance every time you cast this to get that. Now, if we look at OB6, it starts out at high, okay, potency high, and that's really good. That also tracks with the previous weapons that do a similar thing. Uh, and the magic attack starts at high as well if you hit the crit. So it does get a little bit better at OB6. Uh, I think this is a great weapon, and it is especially good. I don't think the magic attack is as necessary, but it makes it to where maybe you, if you need that, you don't need the battle trumpet if you also need the fire breach, right? So, again, kind of really making him flexible and freeing up some slots uh, that he can have. All right, moving on, we have the green megaphone, and I've put this one next because it's similar to the gold megaphone, only this one I did put in the mix category. So every other weapon that I've covered so far, I would consider just a straight up support utility weapon. This one is the first one that I would say mixed. And the reason is, well, it actually does elemental damage for one. So you might put this on here because you need him to do water damage, for example. It doesn't go that high. I mean, it's, you know, it's a couple hundred, it's about 230% below what the meta currently is for elemental attack weapons. However, on a utility hero, I think that's just fine, especially when you're also getting the water breach, which makes a lot of sense. And the water breach is kind of the same thing. Potency mid stacks to high. That's that's right out the gate at five star. Going up to six, it's high to high. And that's really good. And that's really all we need for that. But the only other great thing to point out about Green Megaphone is that it's the only weapon that he has that has a sigil break boost. And it's to circle sigil. I was actually kind of surprised that they didn't give him a single other weapon that does a sigil break, uh, but uh, that's just what it is. I don't know. Maybe they decided the rest of his kit was so good that it would be too good to give him that. I don't know. Okay, now we're going to go into the last, um, I guess, the last category, which I call the damage dealer weapons. We're going to start with yellow megaphone because I think this is the only true damage dealer weapon potential there is. And so you'll see here, this is 380% physical non-elemental damage, but it has a 30% crit rate. So higher crit rate than any of the previous uh, weapons that we've looked at. And 
when hitting a critical times three damage. That's pretty big, and I can tell you, uh, I've hit some pretty big crits with it just in some testing. Nothing, you know, fantastical, but pretty good stuff. Um, again, materia here, this is just mostly physical based, nothing too exciting, and that's kind of how it is on almost all of his materia slots. The R abilities, I haven't really talked much about his R abilities. I think they're all pretty good, especially because we already have other weapons to put sub weapons to up his stats. He only has, I think, one weapon that gives straight up physical attack or magical attack. I could be wrong about that, but he doesn't have a lot of them. Most of them are this boost attack, which is great for something like his dice limit break, but otherwise just kind of makes him more well-rounded and not as suited to doing a straight up one type of, you know, doing a lot of physical attack. Then again, neither are most of his C abilities. Um, we can see here that it goes up to 700% physical non-elemental non damage. Again, that's not impressive. However, with a 30% crit rate at three times damage, that does get kind of impressive. And as we look at his outfit uh, that gives the crit arcanum ability, you know, where it, it's 50% more, this, could actually hit really really hard and i'm really excited to potentially try that so uh this is like i said i think his only damage dealer weapon if you were going to build him as a damage dealer i think this is your go-to right now um the last two are blue and red megaphone and they're kind of like the whammies of the set to me why because well they're they're the only ones that started going towards a specific potency and doing the damage along with that however Everything else in his kit is physical damage other than green megaphone. And so you're looking at out of all the weapons he has. So he has 10 total weapons and I'm looking at one, two, three, four of them do physical damage and three do magical damage. But the problem is uh, this all enemies really kind of hurts the style here for me. Um, you know, because 520%, let's be honest, I'm never trying to up this to get him to do a bunch of damage to ice. It's just not happening. So for that reason, I think this is like kind of just I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want it at all, to be honest with you. Um and then the red megaphone is the same thing, only it's the fire version. 520%. I mean the HP is nice. Uh and the fire potency is fine too. I mean, I'm I don't have a problem with that. It's just the fact that they decided to make his L all three of his elemental damages. He can do water, ice, and fire. They're all magical, where everything else he does is physical. This feels kind of weird. It's a little bit disjointed for me. So for that reason, I'm, I'm not excited. And again, this is the second one that's all enemies. And those are just not very popular and not really that useful at this point in the game. So... Those two are kind of whatever, all right? So here's the kind of the list that I made. I put it into a PowerPoint here. And so this is it. I would take Flower Vase and Marching Horn. Those would be my my top two uh, weapons that I would want. And coming down here, Crystal Megaphone, definitely a good weapon. Silver Megaphone, I would say probably even better than Crystal Megaphone, but both definitely good. Just not something I would be rushing for right away unless... I, I was a new player. My team needed that for some sort of content immediately. Coming down here, Battle Trumpet. And again, that could possibly be in this tier one of pink tiers. Um, but I thought it wasn't quite like I would rather have these two, especially because this one's featured. Uh, and I feel like this is the counter to this or, you know, the, the, the balance to it. So I don't know. This this one is like if I was going to put these or like. S tier, this would probably be like A plus, right? Uh, then we have, again, the gold megaphone in the green, which the breaches. So again, great stuff to have, but not as versatile, not as all around useful uh, as any of these three. And then last, uh, the yellow megaphone, I put it in green. To me, it's an honorable mention. It, it is a weapon they give you and whether or not I would try to start this up, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't, uh, probably wouldn't. Uh, or at least not, you know, intentionally. I wouldn't wish list it because I just don't see Kate Sith being a damage dealer for my team. I mean, I've got a lot of other people that I've kind of invested into doing that. Maybe I'm wrong. 
maybe I get his costume or something and that changes. But uh, generally speaking, I don't think that that's the role he's going to fit in. I think he's going to be a utility hero that also dishes out more damage than a lot of the other ones because of his increased crit. That's, that's kind of how I think. And again, it could be the difference maker in a lot of, you know, stuff where you get into those DPS race scenarios and, you know, you just need a little bit more damage. Uh, one of the best places probably to increase damage would be taking out your utility hero and putting another damage hero. That's not doable. You might not survive. I think this is where Kate Sith shines. I can tell you I am very impressed with the testing I've done with him. I also find his crit based, you know, gamble, luck based ability stuff very fun and refreshing to play. So I am absolutely going to be using him. And I can also tell you, I haven't quite decided on the wish list yet. I am going to figure that out next, but I will absolutely be pulling on this banner. And I hate saying this. But I think there's a great probability that I'm going to prioritize Kate Sith stuff over Tifa's initially. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. I, I haven't made up my mind 100%. That's what I'm thinking. But I do want to close this video out. It is getting quite long, 34 minutes. But I really felt like it was important to unpack all of those abilities on those weapons. Because there's so much text. There's so many things to go through. Now, a lot of you might not want to go through it. And if you wanted, you could just check that sheet that I made. I think it's a pretty accurate or, you know, concise little cheat sheet. Let me know what you guys think of Kate Sith. Uh, are you going to be pulling on this banner for him or for Tifa? Obviously, you know, everybody knows that Tifa is the waifu. She is, you know, awesome. Um, we love Tifa, right? I mean, she is like my favorite character, but I also like the new invigoration of Kate Sith. So let me know what you guys think. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, you know I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.